Hey all, Pete here. I'm in my office today and I realize I haven't shot any more videos of my Man Up series. I don't know how popular they are. I'm, they're not getting a lot of views, but um, for those of you that are watching these, I appreciate it. And I hope that I'm passing on, excuse me, some stuff that's helpful uh, to you. Um, today, I want to talk a little bit about um, something that I think is really, really important. And um, it, it, to start with, I want you to think about, like, where does the stereotype in authentic manhood, uh, authentic masculinity, where does the stereotype come from uh, of men being able to stay stoic and controlled um, and in control of their emotions in spite of being surrounded by chaos? You know, where does that come from? Why, 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 why is that a quality of authentic masculinity? Um, you know, the, the stereotype is that real men don't allow their emotions to rule them and don't get influenced in the midst of chaos, they can stay focused. You know, where does that come from? Why, why are they able to do that? Um, I get people in my office all the time as a counselor who are overwhelmed with anxiety and stress, okay? And it's no surprise because, I mean, think about what we're surrounded with. You know, we've got iPhones, we're constantly looking at social media, looking at the news. The news are basically, you know, the mainstream media is made up of fear mongers. Uh, the most base human emotion is fear. It's the easiest emotion to influence in somebody. And so you can really see this in the mainstream media. But if you want the best examples of it, wait until election season and look at the fear mongering that goes on from both sides. Um, and so we have people today going throughout their day in a constant state of anxiety and stress. And one of the most common things I hear in my office is I, I'm overwhelmed, I'm scattered, I can't stop my mind, I can't slow my thinking down. I hear this all the time. And, and, an, and an old stoic principle uh, that I use clinically a lot that, that, that rings true in the clinical setting as well is if we're too caught up in the future, we're going to develop anxiety and fear. If we're stuck in the past, we're going to develop depression. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so why is it that authentic men, real men, don't, don't have those issues? Okay. Well, what they're practicing, whether they realize it or not, is mindfulness. All right? Mindfulness. And mindfulness is a buzzword in, in the clinical world right now, has been for a while, as we've learned more about the effects of trauma, PTSD, especially with our vets. Uh, you know, mindfulness has become more of a buzzword with the invention of uh, dialectical behavioral therapy. Uh, mindfulness has become more of a buzzword, but it's not new. And, and that's one of the things that makes me laugh all the time. Every time there's a new flavor of counseling, you know, I read about it and I'm like, yeah, this has been around for centuries. It, it, you know, all these people that act like it's this new thing. It's like, it's been around for centuries. You know, um, I think it's Ecclesiastes in the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. Maybe it's Proverbs. I can't remember. Uh, anyway, you know, there's, there's not anything new. We just rediscover old things. Um, and, and so mindfulness is the idea that you can only do one thing at a time. And you can only solve one problem at a time. Okay? And you can only solve things that are under your control. So if you're if you're getting consumed in rabbit trails on the news or in your head about things that are happening in the world or around you that you don't have any control over, 
you're you're all you're doing is is destroying yourself from the inside out and you can see this really easily on social media you know i i call them angry posters and people who are always posting how infuriated they are with things that are happening and and it's like i get it there are things that that are upsetting to me but largely i'm not able to do a lot about it and allowing those things to consume me and destroy my mental health is absolutely insane and the left and the right are both guilty of this the left is always outraged about something that's ridiculous and the right is always outraged about you know how things are changing or or what the left is or that the left is outraged about something or whatever. I mean, it's just like, it's, it's insane. It's insanity. And if you want to have peace, and if you want to be an authentic man and not be ruled by your emotions, then that means in all areas, including socio-political things. Okay? And so the practice of mindfulness is a stoic principle it's a christian principle it's it's a buddhist principle one thing at a time one problem at a time one issue at a time and solve it one thing at a time if it's under my control there's nothing i can do about it getting upset about it will not change it getting angry about it will not change it becoming outraged about it will not change it Posting on it, posting on social media about it will not change it. Ranting to other people about it will not change it. And generally doesn't make you feel better. It just gets you more outraged. Okay. Mindfulness is important um, because it's also what I call the first rule of survival. And I stole that from a book called Deep Survival by Lawrence Gonzalez. Who lives, who dies, and why? This book is all about the mindset of people who survive terrible situations. And in the book, uh, Mr. Gonzalez says the first rule of survival is to be here now. That is mindfulness. That is being fully present to what is directly in front of you, to the task at hand. My mind is not on three tasks down my list. It's not on yesterday. It is I am fully present to right now right here, what I am trying to solve. And this is something you can practice no matter what it is you do. If you're a mechanic, then whatever issue you're working on right in that second is what you're working on. If I'm a therapist, then my mind, my focus, everything I'm doing is on my client right then in that moment with what we're trying to figure out. Anything beyond that does not matter. It does not exist. Anything outside of my control does not matter. It is irrelevant because there is nothing I can do about it. As a Christian, I can pray about it, which I do, but that's 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 where my that's it. Okay, trying to control other, other people, trying to control other situations, trying to control systems and things, they're, they're, they're other drivers. None of that is beyond my control. None of that is within my control. It is all beyond my scope of control. So I will be present and practice being present to what. The ta- what is the task at hand? That is what I will be present to in every moment. If I'm with my daughter, I will be present to my daughter. If I'm with my wife, I will be present to my wife. If I'm with a client, I will be present to my client. If I am out hunting, I will be present to what I'm doing out hunting or trapping or whatever it is I'm doing. If I'm training in a martial art, I'm present to solving the current problem I'm dealing with in that moment, in that sparring session. Okay, I'm in tune to my body and my mind and my body are connected together, non-emotional to solve what's happening right now. And that is why in the midst of chaos, real men don't get caught up in the insanity that's surrounding them. They go, what's the first thing I'm going to do right here to try to fix this situation? Now, I accomplish that. What's next thing? I accomplish that. What's the next thing? You can practice this if you're a list maker. You make your list for the day in order of priority and you focus on the first thing first. You don't think about number two or three or four or five or what you have to do tomorrow or next week or next month or next year. 
You don't think about, well, what's the economy going to do? What if I lose my job? What if blah, 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 blah. No control, folks. You have no control over that. So today, I'm going to do this thing. And then I'm going to do this thing. But I'm not worrying about the next thing until I accomplish the first thing. Anytime your mind drifts to the future, you bring it back to right now. First rule of survival, be here now. If you don't want to be ruled by your emotions and by people around you and by the actions and behaviors of people around you, be here now. Bring it back to right now. How do I solve the problem that's right in front of me? If it's beyond my control, I let it. I have to let it go. What's, what's within my control that I can do right now? What is the best use of my time right now? Whenever I start to, when I was a youth minister, there was a million things going on all the time. A million things. And I would have to stop throughout the day and say to myself, Pete, what is the best use of your time right now? And that would bring me back to what I could do, what I could do something about, what I could accomplish. Okay? So I want you to practice being here now, being fully present to the task at hand. Okay? You will, you will develop a very calming presence if you, can, if, you can, if you can work on this task. You'll be the kind of person that people are like, we don't know what to do, let's ask so-and-so. And then you come in and like, okay, what's the problem? Okay, what's the first step that we have to do to solve this problem? Well, but no, 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 no. What's the first step? Because we can only solve one thing at a time and I can only effectively do one thing at a time. Okay, my recommendation... Deep Survival, Lawrence Gonzalez, Who Lives, Who Dies, and Why. Outstanding book. Every man should read it. I thank my brother, Flint, who recommended it to me and bought it for me years ago. He's a clinical psychologist and a research scientist at Stanford. Um, and he recommended this book to me and bought it for me many years ago. Thanks for watching. There are some more outdoor videos coming up soon. And... Uh, Probably in October, you'll start seeing some outdoor videos. So we'll see you next time.